John, you argue that theism is false because of the hiddenness of God. Now, in pantheism, God is defined as everything. So then God is the most obvious, unhidden thing hmm. in pantheism. Does yes. that make pantheism right? Well, it doesn't make pantheism right. It does help pantheism to avoid one of the problems that uh, uh, afflicts traditional theism. And that's, of course, to that extent, a good thing. But there may be other problems that mm -hmm. uh, are faced by this alternative conception of God. I think that it's possible to provide uh, a credible notion of, of, of God in this, in this way, uh, this pantheistic idea of God. Um, How so? It could be, it could be that pantheism could succeed where traditional theism fails. But we have to think about the form that we give to pantheism. There, there are different ways of construing it. Let me start from uh, a less plausible way and move to something that might be a little bit more plausible in my mind. Um, first of all, you have the very simple idea that, that we identify God with the world as we know it, uh, and that's all, okay? So, so the world, perhaps as described by contemporary science, the natural world, all we do is we <laughs> add the sticker God, okay? Yeah. So this, this thing, you know, that science is talking about, telling us all about, we will just call that God. I don't find that terribly plausible. Why should I call that sure, God? Sure. I mean, it doesn't seem to uh, be ultimate. Uh, in any value-related sense, and I think that one of the things that a religious idea requires is is that sort of axiological ultimacy. Value, uh, something. yeah, axiology, the theory of value. Um, so, so that first idea tends to leave me cold. I mean, why would we just add the the label God to to the natural world as we know it? But it could be that instead we think of the possibility that there may be an awful lot more to reality than we do know already. Um, one of the figures, historical figures associated with pantheism is Spinoza, sure. um, the 17th century Dutch philosopher. And he, in one place, says that um, of the modes of God, of the modes of the divine, we are acquainted with only two. And there are infinite, and there's an infinite number of modes to the divine. We're acquainted with two, uh, mentality and materiality, okay? So, so mind mm. and matter, okay? <laughs> We're familiar with that in our own experience. and and in the world around us, mind and matter. But reality as a whole, God as a whole, includes just an infinite number of, of modes. So that idea starts to tantalize me a little more. I start thinking, well, that's, that's more interesting. So if we think that reality might infinitely transcend our uh, present understanding of it, or the extent to which we come to know it through science, for example, um, then when somebody says, I'm going to call that God. Well, well, maybe maybe that would be worthy of such a label. Well, when we talk about the extending reality, does that mean extending the reality that we know in the physical reality? Science is still young. We're only a few mm. hundred years really into real science. So that in a thousand years, a million years, a mm. billion years, if humans last, science will continue to discover more and more. That's one alternative. The other alternative is that there are things that are absolutely in principle beyond science and mm -hmm. cannot be reached with science. Because if you're doing that, then you're into the spiritual realm yeah, and ba yeah. back to traditional you know, religious views. Uh, that doesn't sound like pantheism if you're going beyond the yeah. physical world, even though the physical world can expand. Well, the Spinoza-based idea um, is one that can tantalize our imagination and it can provoke us to investigate and to, to think you know, about how we might come to, to go beyond the limitations that we face at present with you know, matter in mind uh, as we have conceived them thus far. So it could be that in the future we will come to become acquainted with some of these other modes of the divine. Um, but it could also be that they will always surpass our comprehension. But even if you say that they will always surpass our comprehension, um, you're still allowing that, that God is far greater than the sort of uh, reality that is conceived by traditional theism, for example, which makes of one thing, mentality, that one mode, <laughs> uh, a divine reality. Theism would claim that this is a, a, an impoverished view of God because God is not a person and there's no relating to that oh, person and yes. no personal characteristics. Well, there might be some role for personhood, perhaps not personhood as we know it. It could be that personhood as we know it is sort of the thin edge of a, a wedge that expands infinitely, and there could be a way of understanding personhood uh, that is exemplified in 
God, uh, I'm talking about possibilities here, mm -hmm. as God really is, that, that exceeds our present comprehension. Could also be that personhood as we know it, consciousness uh, in one form or another, has some place within the infinite dimensional uh, divine reality. Um, for example, it could be something like, you know, the number three in, in a page of uh, Einstein's equations, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's got a role, it plays a role, in the number three, it's there, but of course it doesn't tell us a whole lot about right. the meaning of the, of the whole. Um, so I think there could be some room, some room for, for personhood, consciousness. Uh, in but, a pantheistic view. Yeah, but this view will, uh, I think it would be well advised to take the Spinoza route to say that the divine reality might infinitely exceed Mm. consciousness and what we know of personhood. The fact that in pantheism, reality is God, that there is nothing mm. more to God than whatever is reality. Mm. Is, is that a limited view of God? Well, in a way, it seems to be completely unlimited, right? Because it doesn't say, well, you know, here's one aspect of our experience, consciousness, and we'll infinitize that and call that God. That's what traditional theism mm -hmm. does. Okay? It says that God in some way embraces everything uh, mm -hmm. that we know and much that we don't know, and um, that this reality is ultimately valuable, and that by taking on board this idea, we can achieve some kind of important value in our own lives. That's what makes it a religious idea, by the way. Uh, it's only if it does that that it counts as a religious idea. That's why I dismissed the first version, the one that just says, you know, the natural world as we know it from science is God. It sounds like you're uh, morphing from an atheistic uh, uh, critic into a, uh, a kind of a soft pantheist. No, I wouldn't say that. I think that a certain form of pantheism is epistemically possible. By that I mean that it it's not obvious that it's false, um, and it's worth investigating further. It might well be true, okay? Uh, I don't think that it is true. I don't believe it to be true. Uh, I think it's worth investigating. And it's quite compatible with that view to say that traditional theism is just plain false. Uh, the idea of consciousness infinitized, the traditional idea of God, um, has irremediable problems uh, attached to it. So, although I remain open on pantheism, I am an atheist. Uh, those two are compatible.